Amen. This is the Sunday Gorilla Men's Bible Study. I'm Brother Thomas Lee Harris III, and we are in the book of Acts, chapter 26. And remember in 25, they were setting Paul up to be questioned by a council of governors and kings. And um, chapter 26 reads as follows. Then Agrippa said to Paul, you are permitted to speak for yourself. So Paul stretched out his hand and answered for himself. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because today I shall answer for myself before you concerning all the things of which I am accused by the Jews, especially because you are an expert in all customs and questions which have to do with the Jews. Therefore, I beg you to hear me patiently. Verse 4. In manner of life from my youth, which I spent from the beginning among my own nation at Jerusalem, all the Jews know. They knew me from first, if they were willing to testify that according to the strictest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. Woo, amen. That, that's verse, verse 5, and I just want to stop and mark that, that the Pharisees were given more distinction and, and description of the Pharisees, that Paul lived the distinctive, right, the strictest sect. Right, that's he was a Pharisee, so he knew the 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 the, the law. Um, verse six, and now I stand and am I am judge for hope of the promise made by God to our fathers. To this promise, our twelve tribes, earnestly serving God night and day, hope to attain. For this hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused by the Jews. Verse eight, why should it? be thought incredible by you that God raises the dead. Indeed, I myself thought I must do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. This I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints I shut up in prison and have received authority from the chief priests when they were put to death, and I cast my vote against them. All right, that was verse 10. So I just want to stop Paul, once again, giving his testimony. Right? He was a bounty hunter. He went and hunted down those who were of the way, those who were believers in the resurrection of Jesus, and brought them to court. And it said he cast his vote, and people were murdered. Right? Murdered. That's how serious he was on the other side. Right? But his testimony is how God is using him for the right side. Come on. Verse 11, and I punished them often in every synagogue and compelled them to blasphemy. And being exceedingly enraged against them, I persecuted them even to foreign cities. While thus occupied, while thus occupied, I would journey to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests. At midday, O king, along the road, I saw a light from heaven brighter than the sun shining around me and those who journeyed with me. And we, all, and we all had fallen to the ground. And I heard a voice speaking to me saying in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard for you to kick against the gourds. Verse 15. So I said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Verse 16. But rise and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness both of the things which you have seen and the things which I have I will yet reveal to you. Amen. Verse 17. I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well as from the Gentiles to whom I now send you to open their eyes in order to turn them from the darkness to the light, from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Verse 19, Therefore, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. Woo, amen. But declared first to those in Damascus, as in Jerusalem, and throughout all the region of Judea, then to the Gentiles, that they should repent, turn to God, and do, and do works befitting repentance. Amen. Come on, church. I got to mark that. Right? And, and that kind of breaks down repentance. Right? He, he says here in verse, that's verse 20, that he declared first to those in Damascus and in Jerusalem, and throughout all the regions, so he went around 
traveling, right? Preaching, and then to the Gentiles that they should re repent, turn to God, and to do works befitting repentance, right? That means change the way you live, change the way you're acting, right? Change your behavior. Manifest in the physical. Verse 21. For these reasons the Jews seized me in the temple and tried to kill me. Therefore, having obtained help from God, to this day I stand witness both to small and great, saying no other thing than those which prophets in the Moses said would come, that Christ would suffer, and that he would be the first to rise from the dead, and would proclaim the light to the Jewish people and to the Gentiles. Now as he thus made this his defense, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, you are beside yourself. Much, much learning is driving you mad. Amen. That's verse 24. So Festus stops him as, as Paul's giving his testimony. He said, all that reading and writing, you know, went crazy. He said, <laughs> current to today. When you get in this word, people are going to start calling you crazy. Right? When you start speaking God's word, people say, oh, you just lost your mind. But testimony here. Paul's testimony testified to our testimony. Amen. Verse 25. But he said, I am not mad, most noble fetus, Festus. I speak the words of truth and reason. For the king before whom also for the king before whom I also speak freely knows these things. And I am convinced that none of these things escapes his attention, since this thing was not done in a corner. Verse 27. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know that you do believe. Then Agrippa said to Paul, you almost persuade me to become a Christian. Wow! Amen. That's, amen. That's verse 28. So in front of the whole council, the king said, you almost got me. Right? I'm almost a believer. I'm almost going to jump on the way. Amen? Verse 29. And Paul said, I would go to God that Verse, verse 29, and Paul said, I would to God that not only you, but also all who hear me today might become both almost and altogether such as I am, except for these chains. When he said these things, the king, the king stood up, as well as the governor and Bernice and those who sat with him. And when they had gone aside, they talked among themselves, saying, This man is doing nothing deserving of death or chains. Then Agrippa said to Festus, This man might have been set free if he had not appealed to Caesar. Amen. And that concludes the 26th chapter of the book of Acts. Whoo, powerful, powerful testimony from Paul. Um, Agrippa was going to set Paul free, but he wrote his appeal, so he had to go up to the Supreme Court. Amen. Look at God. Amen. Amen. And that concludes 26. I'm excited, church. I'm excited. It's the power of the word. Amen.